tonight because you are God, because you are Father. You are the one that has given the command. Touch no man, no brother, no harm. The reason why King God glory, no conspiracy come to pass in our life. The reason why you alone, evil all did not land on us. The reason why enchantment are over us. The reason why incantation enchantment did not happen over us. The reason why our singles are getting married. The reason why the mind are conceiving. Because your son sin. The reason why our children are growing with the grow a man. The reason why our mind is giving insight. The reason why you are walking in this assembly. Do you have a reason why we're getting revelation? The reason why the unemployed are getting job. The reason why they are getting promotion. Those men are getting profit. The reason why we're living in divine head. Do you ever work so too? Father, who magnify the Lord Jesus. Your name be praised forever. Glory to the mighty. King of all who worship the mighty. May your name be praised. May your name be reverent forever because you are true. In Jesus' name we pray. When I think of the goodness of Jesus, think of the goodness of you in your own life and all he has done for me. My very soul shall shout hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. When I think, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he is doing for For keeping us alive to praise you. We are grateful your name be praised forever. You may please be standing in his presence in Jesus' precious name. You are welcome to the last Tuesday Bible communion service in the month of October. I tell you of mercy, we are not consumed. Some desire to see today. They can't even plead for mercy. Some have been buried. A young man was sharing this afternoon what happened to one of his younger sisters. This girl got married, became pregnant. Everybody was happy with her for the pregnancy. She told her husband, don't tell anybody I'm pregnant. They kept it. When the pregnancy was nine months, they traveled to do ceremony, you know, family function, I must be there. You know, I must be there lifetime. She told her husband, don't tell people. But when she had the function, she said she must be there. She went. By the time she came back, pregnancy was still there. When she was due to deliver, enemy pulled her out from the right place to the wrong place. What do I mean? Instead of going to hospital to go and deliver, they went to somebody they believe knows how to deliver. She stayed there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, when those who are tried, they are not doctors, they are not, they are not, they, they didn't, she, going to, she didn't go there for antenatal. She just went there because she felt, you know how people reason, they say that person can, that woman can. In the long run, the woman and the baby did not survive it. Praise the living Jesus. But here you are, the Lord kept you. Here you are, the Lord preserved your life. Here you are. There are times I'm taking wrong medication. At times I'm taking overdose or underdose. At times your eyes have torn you. At times you have slipped. At times your vehicle has hit something. At times your vehicle has hit you or just name it. 
At times, you touch a cable and things just pull you. You pull you. God pull you out. And you sleep and waking up is difficult. But you still got up. In your dream, you were fighting. You woke up. Eh? Thank God it was a dream. Amen. Here you are. I want you to see God did not keep you alive just for you to complain or to murmur or think that he's not fair. He kept you alive to keep praising him. So that as you are praising him, it will be easier for you to assess your blessing. Like our sister Matilda said, when you are praising God, knowing that sin, it's better than my tears is unto God. Even my hands is lifted unto him. It better my knees are for him than for you to do it to, to somebody that cannot help you. Please help me, help me. I live here. You know, you see beggars with your hand. People just, nobody will give them money. But when it's unto God, lift your hand and wash it. He will just say, no, 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 this is my daughter, is you. And I tell you, that's how your blessing will come in Jesus' precious name. We have come to learn at his feet. Some of us, we are at the mountain for three nights and four days. Welcome back home. And for those that did not come, welcome back home. Because there's something about God. God sees the heart. There are some that would love to be there, but something kept them back. Their heart went with us. And I believe their own testimony will come to them in Jesus' precious name. And for those that went, I pray, may your faith be like Peter. May you be sustained in Jesus' precious name. Peter was with Jesus Christ all through. People were making him like, this one is not a serious Christian. In the long run, Peter stood out. Paul was fighting Jesus and his group. In the long run, he was better. Are you getting the logic here? So you must know that it never think because you were you are better because I didn't go, I'm not good. No. You must let God to allow God to see your heart. So that your anointing, the blessing God has for you come to you in Jesus' precious name. The charge I have before us this evening is sustain the fire or anointing for the miraculous or the wonders. Sustaining the fire or the anointing for the miraculous or for the wonders you desire from the Lord. Whatever you want to sustain must be activated. Whatever you want to sustain, maybe they say you are fine, you are fine girl. It enter your head. You start bleaching. Do you know you will be fine again? Ah, you are a fine girl. You are very fat. You now want to know somebody. You now start taking something to make you slim. What happened? You look old. Do you get it now? Or they say you are too skinny. You are not fat. You now start drinking something to make you look fat. You start looking what? Start looking sickly because one, you are trying to be somebody. Whatever, whoever God has made you to be must be sustained. The fire, the anointing God has given unto you must be sustained. And how do you sustain this anointing? It's by what to do with yourself. The confidence you have in God. When you believe in what God can do, you look out for what he can do for you through you. What he can do for you and through you. It becomes easier for you to assess what it has for you. If any of my children come to me with the mind that, let me go and tell my mom will give me. When I hear they say I will give them. When they come I say, okay, I will give you later. But when I didn't hear, mommy will give me. Let me go and answer. I'll say, go. Pray about it. You know why? Because the child came with confidence that mommy will do it. Like what I had to do, God sees our heart. When your heart is tuned on what God can do, not because somebody said God can, but because you believe God can, it becomes easier. Amen. For us to sustain the fire, I pray that God will help us this night to understand what it is to sustain the fire God has put in us in the name of Jesus. May none of us be like Samson, that fair has all it takes. Along the line, the fire went off. May we not end like Moses, thinking that, well, I'm close to God now. Must we bring out fire? Must we bring out water from the rock? In the long run, God said, no, no, no. You have missed it. It's not we. You are my mouthpiece. You will see, you will not enter. May that not be a person in your precious name. May we end well like Peter. May we end like, like I said, Jesus Christ. May we end well like Saul. May we be sustained with what God put on our inside in Jesus' precious name. When I was much younger in my village then, in the night, towards evening, between five and six, you know, women are coming back from the market. Then the men are already back from the farm, sitting down, taking fresh air. The little children, their daughters, will go to somebody else's compound, those that have lit the firewood. When they get there, they are this, I don't know what they call it in English, is the roughage from palm kernel. You know, for those that know how to make palm kernel, people always, I don't know, no, you know, when you <laughs> praise the Lord, when you make palm oil, you know, you get palm kernel, you keep rubbing or use leg, depending on the quantity. Those roughers, okay, they're sharp or they whatever, okay? When they remove the oil, 
that thing they gather it together. So when they come to your house, you already your fire is on. They'll just take a little portion of the fire of the praise. You see what English can do to us. Praise the Lord, because there are things we know, but no one for it in English. They will take a coal of fire. No, just like a um, coal of fire. Yes, coal of fire. And put inside that thing and cover it. They'll be going. What do you see? You see smoke. You know, you'll hear there's no smoke without fire. The thing will, they'll cover that thing they, because the thing is a little big. They'll put this, that small coal of fire inside, cover it. You won't see flame, but you'll see smoke. They are going home. As they get home, they'll, they'll blow it. When they blow that thing, flame will come. They put it under and the thing will, they will start cooking. I was telling myself something. Do you know that most times we don't know how to find to flame what we have? We keep looking at somebody. That person better than me. Have you been I am like this? You have ever seen white people that don't know how to speak English? And they are ogre. They come to Nigeria, the people behave like this. The person is a god because the person is a white man. He cannot speak English. You can speak, but the man doesn't understand the English you're speaking. The man is speaking his own mother tongue. Likewise, we are from heaven. Except we understand God and live like him on earth, there's no way the fire will be sustained. Praise the living Jesus. Except you understand who you are in Christ. Anywhere you go to, people must know that somebody has entered. You enter a place, they will sense your presence. If they are evil, they will bow before you. They will excuse themselves. If they are good, they will welcome you. And that will be your person in Jesus' precious name. During my service here, I was to go to see the governor. I didn't want to go at first because I don't like to go and beg. I'm not used to such. So by the time I prayed, hey, if you wonder why am I fasting? I said, I prayed. I read the book of first. I was not speaking like Esther. Do you know by the time I observed all the protocol, I walked there, but I had to follow the protocol. I went to the gate field form from one state to the other. By the time I entered the governor's office and the governor sitting there. First thing he told me was that see, I came with a good aura that I felt like sleeping that I had peace. I was wondering I was telling why I came Copper, Christian coppers need money he said better, I said so maybe that's why God brought you if you don't give somebody else, I was just talking you know, because of how I read the book of Esther why, there's something God put on me because I sat down to if you want to go before a king, what do you do? Okay, it's in the Bible. That's how I do my, how I live my life. I'll go and do that in the Bible. So that you help my faith to walk in faith. Because faith without work is dead. Do you get it? You must always see this thing about, is in the Bible. You read it. We read it to help your own faith. Do you get it now to do what you want to do? But when you now say, ah, they say, that man won't talk to me. Let me not even go. He's not for my tribe. Uh, he doesn't like fair women. What is that? That goes to do with you. With what God put on your inside. Praise the living Jesus. So for you to sustain the fire, for you to sustain the fire that will best wonders in your life, the first thing to do is to learn to evangelize. You must learn, you must accept, you must tell yourself, this is what I must do. You see, evangelism is not just preparing to go out. If I don't go out, they say I did not come. No. It must be what you tell yourself. Anywhere you go to, you can just say you are blessed. You can give counsel. You can put, bring your own opinion, something that you know is positive. You just try to know how to be yourself. That's evangelism. Don't wait is when they call and tell you, you give an excuse, you're going somewhere. What about where you live, where you work, your school, your office, your compound, your family? Do they know you are born again? Or you're born again only in church? Praise the living Jesus. Because for the fire to be sustained is not just for one part of the country. It's anywhere you find yourself. Concerning the Bible says anywhere he goes or anywhere he went, he was doing good. Almighty healer, he healed the leper. When the cripple saw him, they started walking. One person, the lame, the blind, the dead, the hungry were fed. What do you understand by that? Anywhere he went. That means anywhere we find ourselves, we must try to reach out. Our life must be a piece that men will read. Not because everybody will like, some will not like us, but that will not move you. A day came in my life recently 
I was going home. I was in a Kekenape going home. So while in that, the man said that he knows me. I said, okay. I kept quiet. I asked again, I, I, where? I, I said he even knows my husband. I said, okay. But I even know my children at their school. I said, praise God. And I said, I hope it's for good. He said, ah, no, 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 it's for good. Do you know, surprisingly, the man carried me from here, I want Ms. Okota, carried from here to front of our house, turn like this, and park very well so that we can get down. Hey, I said, God. You know why? Somebody has been watching you from afar. So don't just say, maybe it's only church you are holy. No. Be yourself. Don't live a life of pretense. That way you can evangelize very well. Live a life that is you. When something is wrong, it's wrong. Don't say because they say you are preaching. No. This is wrong. In the market, when they prize you, when you want to buy a prize, don't just pre don't deceive yourself. Don't live, don't live a false life. They say you are prizing. So I have money. You have what I want. If it doesn't work, there are many shops I can buy it from. I don't go to my I, I, I know I the pastor's wife or the, for what? When the money is in my hand. At least before I became pastor's wife, I learned about trade by butter. So my being a pastor wife will not change my reasoning properly. Do you get me? That you are born against doesn't mean I see you are born against when you go when you see unbelievers. Life is better because some of all we don't like where we are born into, but now you are born again, life it becomes better. Amen. You don't like family you are born into, but now you are born again. Why not apply the principle that make your life meaningful and beautiful? Praise the living Jesus. We are going to read the book of Luke chapter 10. Our text is from Luke 10, from verse 1 to 24. Luke 10, I read verse 1 and verse 17 to 24. Luke chapter 10, I read verse 1, write in your jotter, 1 to 24. But I'll read verse 1, verse 17 to 24. Praise the living Jesus. After these things, the Lord appointed other 70 also, and sent them two and two before his face, into every city and place, whither he himself would come. In chapter 9, if you read from verse 1, it was the twelve he sent, getting the same enablement. When they came back, they didn't bring good news. They didn't tell them anything happened. But when he sent this one out, they brought back good news. Verse 17. And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, Be I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt thee. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the, that the spirits are sorry unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Praise the living Jesus. In that I just rejoice in spirit and said, I thank thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that thou hast seen these things from the wise and prudent, and has revealed them unto babes, even so, Father, for so it seemed good in thy sight. All things are delivered to me of my Father, and no man knoweth who the Son is, but the Father, and who the Father is, but the Son, and he to whom the Son will reveal him. And he turned him into, unto the disciples and said unto them privately, Blessed are your eyes which see these things that you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings have desired to see these things which you see and have not seen them and to hear these things those things which you hear and have not heard them. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. He sent the 70 he sent the 12 in chapter 9 but they did not come with this testimony. When the 70 came back they were happy that devils oh my God at the name of Jesus we are subject to them. But what did Jesus Christ say? He said he beheld Satan like lightning falling from heaven. Satan is the summary of devils. Do you get it? What they saw was part of the whole. 
Satan was the whole. They saw devils. Jesus said, I beheld Satan. Are you getting me? What Christ saw was the summary of what happened when they went out. Because when they went out, they were going out, they went out in his name. They went out with the confidence that the one that sent me is with me. He has not let me alone. They went out with the confidence that God says, just go and do it. Go and save. Go and do it this way. And they went out and miracles happened. I see that being your own person in Jesus' precious name. I see you obeying God and encountering the miracles in the name of Jesus Christ. They were happy. But Jesus was in the spirit because what they encountered was what many desire to encounter. Amen. Like at the camp, we heard this morning about people that 11 years of binding was brought under. What happened to that lady because she was at the right, at the right time? What if she said, I won't follow my pastor? Where is he taking me to? What about Mrs. Olaito Harris? You hear her testimony. They just came in from US. They went for holiday. She said they reluctantly just came. Let them just come to camp. They went for holiday. I want us to get it to help our mind. You know, see, when it comes to the miraculous, for it to be sustained, it's not in that earthquake. It's not in that noise in the still small voice. They just came back. Laden just came. And they had us come and roll on the altar. She just came. The husband came. In the long run, the yoke of banner was destroyed. I don't know when I'm having to cage you. I see that you're being destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Because they obeyed, the miracles happened. Devils were subjects because the name of Jesus Christ. Devils were subjects. They were happy that so this thing can happen. Just by just telling people, God is good. My God is mighty. My God can heal. My God can do it. Don't worry. Stop crying. Do you know like when somebody is crying, you say, sister, stop crying. It is well. God is only. God will fight your battle. Do you know you are preaching? You evangelize it. But something maybe until they say, okay, let's go. No. It's what you do per time that determines what you get per time. Praise the living Jesus. The disciples, they went and some, they returned. And Christ now commended them. And said, they should not have done because devil we are subject because that's what's supposed to happen but because their name is written in the book of life their name is written in heaven i see that being your own person in jesus precious name i see you making heaven in jesus precious name i see the lord packaging you as a vessel prepared for heaven in jesus precious name and so shall it be anointing is anointing increases and is sustained by uses causing the miraculous to happen anointing increases and is sustained by usage, usage, causing the miraculous to be provoked. In other words, each time you are telling people about Jesus Christ, he's there with you. Each time you talk about Jesus, he's there with you. Each time you mention his name, he's there with you. You discuss about him, he's there with you. Each time you are talking about Jesus, I tell you that is when you, each time you are talking about him, his presence is there with you. Because Jesus is the same with his word. Amen. Obedience activates covenant for the miraculous. Each time you obey him, tell me about Jesus Christ. My God is good. In the name of it is well with you. Sister, stop crying. Your womb will cry, baby. Your husband will come. Your children are sound. You will make a way. I tell you those things when you're talking about God, miraculous things happen. Because you might not see, you can see the disciples, what they saw was that the devils were subject unto them. Just was saying that see that he beheld. In other words, if Christ did not walk with them, how would he have told them what happened? They saw Satan, devils, subject unto them by the name of Jesus Christ. But Jesus beheld Satan because he was with them. That time they were thinking about Jesus. God saw what that devil, ah, Satan could not stand it again. Ah, ah. See this Peter thought that he's a, a, a mumu that doesn't know anything. This Peter that was making mistake, even the one that denied him. I don't know like I'm useful like this. I tell you, I don't know the level you are in your work with God. Don't give up on yourself. I don't know what enemy have talked about you. This one, that don't know how to open Bible, don't even know how to quote. Forget about that one. That should not be your problem. Keep talking about the one you know. God is good. God loves me. Jesus is the Son of God. You are talking about God. Don't get into that maybe I cannot do it like somebody else. That person can quote everything. It's not about quoting everything. They're about to what is on your inside. That's where you can draw from. When God sees your hand and tell you miraculous happen, if they have not obeyed him, would they have seen devils? Something under the name of Jesus Christ. We just have seen Satan behind Satan being brought down because Satan couldn't stand what we were doing in the name of Jesus Christ. I see God enabling you to do the miracle in your precious name. What you speak often, you will become. The more you talk about Jesus Christ, I tell you, I want to encourage your hearts this evening, people of God. Each time you talk about God, people will laugh at you at first. Keep saying it. You know, with time. 
They say, okay, let's go and ask her. She will, she will tell us answer. But when they make mockery of you, now I say, okay, it's okay. I better stop you. Okay, what were you saying? You join them. You can't be better. You can't grow that way. You cannot grow that way. When they make mockery of you, you want to join them. After a while, no, 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 no. You don't grow that way. Let them keep laughing at you. With time, they'll come to seek counsel from you. I see God helping in Jesus' precious name. What you talk of when you become, the more you talk about Jesus Christ, what he can do, what he expects from you, don't do this. Do it this way. Go about this way. Wife, submit. Husband, love. Children, obey. Don't forsake the assembly. No, some are. The, some is. The more you keep the word he says you do. Do you know before you know you start living that life you want to be? If you have been married, or let me give you this example. You, uh, you got married when you were 20, 21, depending on how old you are when you got married. And after two years of marriage, you expect your husband or your wife to understand you. It's not possible. It is not. Don't pretend. Don't speak in tongues on that. It's not possible. Somebody that lives his or her life differently came into your life. Only the word of God. The, the more you as a wife keep looking to this word of God and keep doing your own as a wife, the man your own. That's where you can live together as one. But if you say, no, no, no. Bible say, you tell your wife, Bible say, wife say, Bible say. It doesn't work that way. You can't be telling your wife what Bible says you should do and you're not doing it. It doesn't work that way. Because your life must be an epistle. Amen. Recently, there's something that she's always reminding me about myself. I didn't like it. Alright? I didn't like it because I know it's the truth. But that was what I know is the truth. So, recently, my husband and I mentioned the same thing about me. I didn't get angry because I know it's the truth. Do you get me? Am I making sense? Because I know this is a habit I have that is not good. And I've been trying to think maybe with time. So when people God convicted me, because people will convict you to be better. It doesn't condemn you. Are you hearing me, people of God? Each time you get condemned, it's not God. It's Satan that is condemning you. so that he will not pull you out to accuse you. When I was convicted that this thing is not good, I will not say, help me. Only God help me. When my husband and told me that this is it, this is what you do. Hey, I said, God. I told him that this is the truth. That we go have a comment about it. Do you see how God helped me now? Because I didn't try to say no. no. I didn't try to explain it. I didn't try to give excuse. Do you know that way you are making your husband to be your husband indeed? I need to know you are the wife. But when I want to explain, no, 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 what about you? You two, uh, uh, uh. are you the accuser of the brethren? Are you Satan's agent? Praise the Lord. So it takes the Spirit of God to convict us. And when we are convicted, it for us to be better. He doesn't condemn us. So each time we get condemned, it's not God. Though. The truth you know is what to set you free. In Jesus' precious name. Mark 16, 20. Each time you preach Jesus Christ, he's always there confirming his word with signs and wonders following Jesus' precious name. Number two, you must maintain a definite lifestyle. You must maintain a definite lifestyle. You must learn to be yourself. When you are in church, this is house of God. When you are told, this is house, house of God. When you are in school, this is house of God's presence. In other words, anywhere you find yourself, always say, this is God's presence with me. God has promised not to leave me or forsake me. That way to help you. Because if you are in school, say, thank God, nobody is there. Let me live my life. No, 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 no. Or you are to work. I beg you, this is how they do in my work. Everybody tell lies. They come by 8. They write uh, 7.30. You join them too. Meanwhile, you came by 9. You must maintain a definite lifestyle. That way, your fire will be sustained. You are late, you are late. You are early, you are early. When I was working, I don't go to work late. Not because of anything. I told myself, I must, I time I come before they even open, I will stay there. When they open, I time I join the cleaners clean the office. I will sit down. You know why? I told myself, it pays me better. I prefer to do good and say, ah, I didn't ask you to do it than doing bad. 
Because when I do bad, the pain is more to me than when I do good and I say it's not worth it. Praise the living Jesus. So why must you go there and say, God, hold on, let me finish doing evil and come back? No. You must acknowledge that God present is ever with you. His presence is what you, what you need per time. Because when you have a living lifestyle, it becomes easier for you to, each time you want to join, hey, God, do you see, you are playing yourself, even though your body says, go and join them, go and do that. You are, you are fighting it because you know that, and God will see your heart. First time you step this way, second time this way, third time, before you know it, you won't even have interest in that thing. But when you not keep uh, God will understand, every day ask him for forgiveness, I tell you, grace will never abide because it's the same. It doesn't work that way. You keep doing the wrong thing, abusing, abuse your husband, abuse your wife, abuse your children, abuse everybody, abuse your, bo- your boss, your landlord, your tenant, your cleaner, everybody. And I say, hey, God, forgive me, this is my mouth. You must go, you see, the best way to stop such is go to that person. I'm sorry. Each time I want to talk that way, please tell me it's okay. For the married in the house, you must learn the habit of telling your husband, each time I do this, tell me this so that I will not do it. Not that you don't pretend as if you didn't know. It, it's not good. Each time I want to do it, say this to me so that that demon will not take hold of me. Praise the living Jesus. If one man could have 2,000 demons, you think it's not possible for anybody to have it. One person, Mark 5. One person, 2,000 in one man. One person, and they were looking at the, his, he, he can't stand, they put chain, he cut his, cut his body. Meanwhile, they met in 2,000 demons in one person. Praise the living Jesus. Maintain a different lifestyle. The Bible says in Isaiah 40, 31, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not walk and not faint. When you have a daily lifestyle, you know what happens? It helps you to live a spiritual, sensitive life. When you have, when you maintain a daily lifestyle, it helps you to live a spiritually sensitive life. Because each time you want to do what is bad, you know, you stop. Or, let me give you an example. When we went to the camp, maybe you are, you happen to carry gala or biscuits or Hollandia yogurt or whatever. You are the one that took it by yourself. Oh, to, because you told yourself, I cannot fast, I'm drinking this. I, you are not, not that you are an elderly person, not that you are on medication. I, I want to give us, don't, don't get condemned. I'm trying to help your heart next time. You are the one that purposely prepared to carry it. Are you carried it? Are you going to camp again? Each time you want to take it, you want to hide. Note, you hide and take it. And you'll be feeling bad. You come back again. Ah, let me finish up. Open it. Do you see it now? I'm helping your heart. Next time, what to do? Don't take that thing at all. That's how to fight it. You want to maintain a daily lifestyle. Next time, don't take it. They say we should go with juice. Okay, I'll take juice. I'll take water. So when I get there, I'll take I'll take water like that. Do you get it? Then you know gradually, do you know you are disciplining yourself now. So in case you did that, don't get offended. You don't know. You thought you cannot. All right? Another one is coming next year, or even January. Praise the Lord. The Lord will prepare you properly. It's a precious thing. Because he said, they that wait upon the Lord, waiting upon the Lord is all about doing the same thing you believe God wants you to do. He said we should fast. Hey, ah, God, the one I'm feeling now. They say we should fast. Okay, I wait. I want to marry. God, God, your husband should come. You are you are waiting upon the Lord. You renew your strength. You don't give up on God. He will not give up on you in Jesus' precious name. You want to carry baby. God, I've had 11 years. My own will not even get 11 years. I must carry baby. Seven years, my own will not get. You, get, you must learn to. You are waiting. Keep saying good things to yourself. Before I got my husband myself, you see, I wasn't praying, God, I must marry from that place. God, like the way some people pray prayer, telling God, it must be from my village, it must be from this, it must be tall, it must be this. Don't talk like that to God. It's a good thing, you know. But for me, as one, I was telling God, well, you know I can be a wife, help me. I see people that are married. That thing I don't like seeing in people's marriage. Things that, to me, are big, but they are small, small things. Well, you know I can be a wife, you know, help me. And God help me. 
So it wasn't with stress. It wasn't with maybe, should, is, is, it, you, is it not? Many people, want to marry, many people want to marry me that time. People that have what they believe, they want, they flaunt it, I would think is the one. But I wasn't moved. I wasn't moved because what are you showing me that I've not seen? What is it? What is it? You must ask God for a man, for sisters. Ask a man that has the of God. I tell you, when you get a man that has the of God, you are married gold. Because when you marry a man that has the of God, you know what he will do for you? The man will be a covering for you. The man will be there telling you, as he hear from God, he will tell you. Even when you want to misbehave, he will still tell you the truth. If you don't marry a man that looks like what you want, the man will be pleasing you, and two of you will be suffering, fighting, because one, two of you are trying to deceive yourself. And brothers, look for a woman that loves God. Sister, listen. If you cannot serve God as a single sister, when you marry, don't deceive yourself. <laughs> don't even try it. Don't think you serve God better when you marry. It's not possible. Except you want to disobey God. Praise the Lord. Because if you read the book of Numbers 30, you understand it properly. When you are still with your father, you obey your father. When you marry, you obey your husband. So when you now marry, your husband says, please, stay back. Don't go to church. No, no, no. This is my husband. He's backsliding. I'm going to go to church. You are disobeying him. Do you get me? Or say, this day, go and cook this. I won't cook it. I'm going to church. I'm late. You don't do that. There are times, let me tell you, there are times I have a meeting in the church. My mom will tell me, I should prepare a particular meal. Thank God for him. The day he wants to eat. I'm always happy that I thank God he wants to eat. Praise the Lord. I'll be telling myself, God, devil will tell me, I'll tell him that you're going to church now. I'll say, no, don't say that. Go and do this. I'll, do you know in the long run, I will not be late. Or even I'm late, maybe a little. I'm, I'm not about general church meeting, maybe unit meeting or other meeting I have. Because I'll tell myself, devil want me to react next that I will do the wrong thing. But it is not worth it. If he doesn't remember I have meeting, I don't need to go and tell him. So that he'll start feeling bad. Hey, I'm sorry. I'll not be feeling good. Do you get it? So I'm going to work on myself. Since he didn't know early to tell me to do that thing, I'm going to do it now and go to God. I won't just, hey, God, I'm here before you. It's my husband made me to come late. God, I'm really sorry. Hey. Meanwhile, the man is waiting for you. He didn't cook the food. He now come back and say, I'm sorry. Uh, I went to church. Church. Which service is that? Women's meeting. It doesn't make sense. So you must learn to serve God with all you have as a single sister. So that when you marry, you can sustain your marriage, serving the Lord with your whole heart. Because if you don't serve God properly as a single, single brother, when you marry, you want to please your wife, please your husband, in the long run, you leave God behind. So you must not say, you must do it well. Bible says, bear your yoke in your youth, not in your old age. You can't bear your yoke when you're married. You cannot. Is it the husband or children or family or neighbor? Which one will you bear? But when you are younger, you serve God, open your heart, give in all. They call youth meeting, you won't come. Youth convention will not come. That day you say you are among the youth. It's in the Friday meeting you could come. Friday, come and pray. You are sustaining, you are, you are building something on your inside. You're sitting the fire on your inside. That Friday you come, even if you want to have prayer, they pray people go, come for this, you come. I tell you, when you marry, when they say let's do anything, for, people will know why you are doing with ease. Because your muscle, you have exercised your faith when you, are, when you are single. Is it when you marry, you carry pregnancy. You give birth, you are breastfeeding. You know, I'm giving an excuse. Hey, my husband, my baby, I was breastfeeding. My baby. You, ah, ah. So, all the youth in the house say, Praise the Lord. The fire must be sustained. The fire, all the singles in the house. And if you are married, don't give an excuse. You must still serve God. If your husband says, Stay at home, stay at home and be praying for him. Don't give any excuse. Stay at home, cook my food. Stay at home, cook his food. Not that I be grumbling. We not cook food, food not born or be tasteless. Praise the living Jesus. Praise the living Jesus. Okay? When you maintain a living lifestyle, it brings your body under control to do the needful. It brings your body under control to do the needful. Your health is improved. Because each time you are exercising your faith in spiritual pain, your health is improved. They say, come and pray. God Almighty, whatever. When I eat food, it knows my body. No evil shall befall me. You are something is happening. That time God is cleansing and purifying you. Amen. Keeps your fire burning. Activates the anointing per time. It attracts your kind alone. If you maintain a little lifestyle, believers will see you, they want to stay around you. 
Unbeliever will see you, they will avoid you. Leave that one. All these people that go to your Bible, leave her. But when a believer sees you, they are happy to live with you, that you are a child of God. Praise the living Jesus. Number three, consistent praying in the Holy Ghost. Bible says in Jude 20, build up your most holy faith praying in the Holy Ghost. That is the most holy faith when you pray in the Holy Ghost. Because when you're saying, God, this is my husband, God, this is my wife, this is my child, you are just talking to God based on what your kind of mind, the wisdom of man is telling you, what you are seeing. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, I tell you something happens. That time you're talking to God, speaking the truth. Your spirit is telling God how you feel about what you see, what is on ground. Amen. You can imagine a woman and husband comes home late. When you pray the Holy Ghost for that man, you just, each time you want to get angry, the food is there, he has not come back. Just say, Father, I thank you for this food, it's blessed. My husband is coming to eat it. I thank you because this is a home where God lives, a place of peace. You go to the door. By the time you pray, if you have children, let's pray that God will bless our home. Don't tell, never tell a child your daddy comes later. Don't tell children such things. Don't ever report your child to your, to your husband to your children or your hus- wife to your children. It's not healthy. Let's pray that God will bless us. We have this. Bless mommy. Bless daddy. By the time they are praying, you're not praying in tongues. You know what, you know what you're telling, telling God? God concerning my husband. He's well with him. God protects him. I get me. You're building your most holy faith because you want, you wish your husband well, wish your wife well. So when you're praying the Holy Ghost, you're building your most holy faith. You're talking to God, even though your heart is wanting that, why is he behaving this way? But when I pray, in telling God, God bless my daddy, God didn't give him money, so I buy this for me. You are saying, God, you provide. By the time you're praying the Holy Ghost, oh my God. The man will not come, ah, sorry, I'm late. It was this, is that. You see, you won't tell him I know. You just say, okay, ah, welcome. Come and eat your food. Do you know that that day, that is most of us today, if you are wise, practice on and on. Before the man will be better. But when you knock on every day, you are late again. Every day, where do you go to? Ah! Where did he go to? He went out and he came back. Thank God. Testimony. Praise the Lord. He went out and he came back. You know, last week, my mother was mentioning something about that most time I ask questions. Where do you get the money from? I don't ask because I don't have anything to say. I know he's my husband. I know he's a pastor. I know that God has called him. I know how to God is upon him. I know that he has his own account, has church account. I can't just say because uh, it's my husband, uh, money is there. Where is this one from? Do you know before, if not I mentioned that, that I always maybe he doesn't like the way I always talk, but he mentioned that that thing is helpful because I want to know where the money is from. Is it church owned or our own? Abby, so that I can bring this. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Amen. Because I won't say because my husband go and bring church money. No, 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 no. I cannot allow myself to do that. Praise the Lord. So I always ask, okay, somebody brought it. Okay, it's for this. Okay. It once it's not our own, I will, I will just forget about whatever I want to ask. Ask of. Because if you don't tell the truth about your partner, you put yourself into trouble. He'll be hiding money from you, hiding things from you. Praise the living Jesus. What is this one from? He will tell me. He will tell, okay, I will just remove my mind. I won't even say what I, why I was asking. He wouldn't know because it's not in my heart. I will keep quiet. But when he says, okay, it's my own, I say, ah, praise God. <laughs> Amen. I will not say what the money, the money came for this, for this purpose, this money came to serve this. Amen. Praise the living Jesus. So praying the Holy Ghost is helpful. It's helpful. It's healthy for the home. Children, it's healthy for you. I've been that our Holy Ghost baptized. Husband, it's good for you. Pray for your wife. Once you want to get, you can enter the toilet and be praying in the Holy Ghost for her. God help my wife. Ah, the way she talks. Ah, my wife. Just enter the toilet. You think maybe you want to poo poo. Be praying for her there. That, because the more you see her talking, you get angry the more. And that's why you want to beat her. Because she must talk. Amen. So enter the toilet. Sit down there. Then I, I want to eat myself. Enter there. See the desires. God help me. I'm beheaded in this one. See how my wife is behaving. God help me. Holy Spirit, you're my help. Spirit of truth, help me. Help me. By the time we, saw, we keep saying help me, help me, before you know you start praying the Holy Ghost, I tell you, you are rekindling the fire. You are awakening the core of who you are. The priest in the home. 
the prophet, the husband, the father that must not get, I must not misbehave. Amen. Then, okay, I say consistent. This builds your most holy faith. Okay, Bible says without faith, no man can see God, can please God. Okay? When you please God, it makes enemies to be at peace with you. Then, write Luke 9, 28, 26, 28 to 29. Jesus took Peter, James, and John to the mountain, and while he prayed, you know why I love that scripture verse? Bible says he took them up to the mountain. While he, he didn't say while they prayed, it was he that prayed, Jesus Christ, and the only one that has a change of countenance. You know, there was each time you are praying, don't say everybody is praying, they say pray. Let you, you must pray to the point that you are the one. Something happens to you. Amen. Like you come to everyone, let's pray, let's know you pray. You know, say we are praying. You must, your prayer must be God, please. Christ prayed, and there was a change. There were four of them up there on the mountain. But it was, let's read this, please, so that you get what I'm saying. Luke 9, 28, 29. Luke chapter 9, 28 to 20. Praise the Lord. And it came to pass about an eight days after this, this saying, he took Peter, John, and James, and went up into a mountain to pray. And as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered, and his raiment was white and glistering. He took them, they went to pray. You come to a prayer meeting, and one person is one, having a change. One person is having testimony. One person having, ah, how come I went there? How come the other person is married? I went to um, pray together. That person is pregnant, and I'm not. That person got a job. How come? Because Christ prayed. Something happened to him alone. Do you get it? He took them, they went, but he alone had the encounter, the, the change. Praise the living Jesus. Number four, avoid wrong association. Avoid wrong association or atmosphere. First Corinthians 15, 33. First Corinthians 15, 33. Be not deceived, evil communication corrupt good manners. Be not deceived, Evil communication corrupts good manners. Wrong association, wrong atmosphere. Everybody look up, please. If you lit a candle and you now go to where the fan is blowing, what happened? Good. If you light it again and use plate to cover it, what happened? What happened? Good. You can see whether breeze blow it to go off, you cover it to, glow, it to go off. Likewise, evil communication corrupt good manners. My friend, my childhood friend, we grew up together in the same primary school, secondary school. We have been friend, 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 friend. And the person is doesn't even believe in what you believe in. He's the one that you confide in. He's the one that co come to your house, but. You know, he's the one you go to his house. You don't come to your house. He's the one that always calls you on phone before 10 minutes to time for service. He's the one that wakes you up in the morning, telling you a story throughout the night. You don't wake up early, you come to church late. I tell you, that is how the devil operates. You are the one that have light. You are the one that have the anointing. Enemy would try everything to quench it. It can come uh, in form of people gathering and making you feel that you have arrived, praising you. You don't think you're the only one qualified like Elijah. He was telling God, I, I'm the only prophet. I have not bowed. God said, You, I have seven talents. I have bowed bow down to bow. Don't get to that point of thinking maybe because once breeze will blow, the lights will go off. Just a word from Jezebel, he went to, he was hiding. Because when you live with people that don't believe, they can be saying things that will weaken your faith. You, I will sack you. You know, what's happening? Hey, if I lose my how will I fit? Hey, okay, okay, sorry. Hey, because the person is threatening you. You don't have to go back to and tell God, God, behold, they're threatening. He will sack me because I stood for truth. Praise the living Jesus. Evil communication corrupt good manners. I pray your fire will not go off in Jesus' precious name. Or when you lit a candle and take it to outside in the rain, what will happen? It will go off. So you must understand the atmosphere you stay per time. Where you go per time. Like the lady I shared earlier on. Nobody should know she was pregnant. But she couldn't stand people not seeing she was pregnant. She went for family function. 
she came back to give birth and that thing, something happened. That would not be a portion. You must know the atmosphere you put your head in. Don't just say I must. People before people say I'm too slow. People say I'm slow. Don't think. Any level you are, thank God for it. If I had entered in when I would ent- when I thought I would enter university, maybe I wouldn't have married my husband. So when I look back, I thank God I didn't enter when I thought I would have entered. So that you're not married now doesn't mean that you might tell God, I know when you on my in your own time make you beautiful. Praise the living Jesus. Lord, you bring a man after your own heart. A man that will love you and love me. A man that will bring me closer to you. A woman that will be submissive for brothers. You must learn to tell her the simple truth. Don't just say, eh, when I marry that person, the person who I will call you convert to. The person will condemn you. Praise the living because the person is, you see, sisters or brothers, when you marry an unbeliever with a mind that she's fine, he's fine, they say this. What happens when the person, my person will condemn you every day? The person will bring it to mind, telling you what they say in the Bible. Satan knows what is the Bible, he trembles. Though. So, that will be telling you, you will not be feeling so bad. Eh, Bible says, love your wife, you don't love me. How come everybody's buying it for your wife? You've not bought for me. You not feel so bad. And the streets in the Bible, or I take. Everybody, every, see all the women, they are going there. You don't want me to go. Please give me money. Bible says, if you don't care about your family, you want an infidel. Your wife is telling you that. I'm not an infidel. Oh, yeah, take money. Do you see what, how your life is now? Devil has caged you. You think you don't love that woman, though. She doesn't love you. And vice versa. Or you, a sister, each time you put pressure on your husband, or a husband putting pressure on your wife, because you might a believer. Tell her, look at you. Didn't they tell you that you should submit to your husband? You know, I say it's true. You know, I'll be crying. Hey, my husband said I should not come to church. See, I will tell them, if he says you should not come, stay at home, be praying for him. Me tell you to come to church. I don't do that. He's your husband. He says you should not come. Stay. Pray for him at home. Don't use sentiment to make me tell you to obey your husband. And God will not say, who told you to tell her not to? Praise the living Jesus. I don't give such counsel. So if you don't wait for God to give your husband that will be happy for you to go to church, then what you see in it, you taste it and you eat it. But I pray, mercy be brought in your precious name. So sisters, tell God I need a husband. The one you send. The one that will love me and make me better. The one that will keep telling me it's time for church. And brothers, God, help me get a wife that will be a helpmate for me. Praise the living Jesus. Evil communication corrupts good manners. No matter how you look at it. It cor- it's, it's, you know what's something corrupted? Have you ever seen how, have you ever put a, a kerosene in water? You want to scoop oil, it's already smelling kerosene. Or have you ever, and you, you flip your room, close the window, and you are feeling sleepy. Aye. You open the door, it's smelling. You, f- you go close the door again. You enter, close your nose, open all the window, go out again. You are fighting sleep, you are fighting the fleet. Because one, you, you did it at the wrong time. Um, are you getting me? Because if you do it at the right time, maybe around four, you flip the room, close everywhere, stay in the living room, or you are coming to church. By the time you come, the thing will wear out by itself. The smell. Do you get it now? Likewise, when you wait upon the Lord for what is yours, things will work easily with you. My friend is mine. Let me to marry. Everybody get married. Let me to marry. My mother, they are disturbing me. My village people. Are they the one that they say, mm, you know, even better. Just laugh. Just take it to <laughs> Hey, God have mercy. Excuse me. Number five, holiness. 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 This is God's nation. In Genesis 1, 28 to 29, 26 to 29, God made us in image and likeness. So we are like God. He's a perfect God, he's iniquity. Everything about God is holy. Everything about God is unique. Everything about God, there's no spot, no wrinkle, no blemish. Psalm 93 verse 5 says, Thy testimonies are very sure. Holiness becometh thy house, O Lord, forever. In other words, everything about God is certain. Everything about God is perfect. Everything about God is definite. It's not like try and error. Holiness is not in your dressing. Holiness is not in your walking gently. Holiness is not in your sitting like this. Holiness is not in your talking gently. Holiness is in your heart. What you emit what you emit, what comes out of you. What you are when nobody is there. What you are when people that believe in God are not with you. Holiness is a lifestyle that people can see 
and can see in you and through you. It can be in your eyes, in your utterances. Praise the living Jesus. It's not in your, it's not in wearing very long or very, it's not, it's not in your not putting makeup, no. Holiness is God's nature that abhors evil, that stands for what is true. Holiness is saying that this is what it must be done and you're doing it. Holiness is living a life pleasing to God. Holiness is knowing that this is what God expects of me and you're doing it. And I see the Almighty God helping you and myself living a life pleasing to Him in Jesus' precious name. The fire in us must be sustained for the miracle to happen. When we activate it by obeying God, understanding what God has said to you, to me, as a brother, as a sister, because all of us are trained of God. Nobody is older, nobody is younger. We are trained of God. And when we live as children of God, it becomes easier for us to enjoy what the Father has for us. I see us enjoying such in your precious name. Let's rise on our feet. Let's rise on our feet. As we open the Bible to Luke chapter 22. Amen. Luke 22. I read from verse 19. Luke 22, 19. Amen. And he took bread and gave thanks and break it and gave unto them, saying, This is my body which is given to you. This do in remembrance of me. Likewise also the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood, which is shed for you. Praise the living Jesus. God gave us his flesh and his blood that we should eat in remembrance of him. What sustains the fire is the power in the blood, the power in his flesh. We should do it in remembrance of him. When we eat, we are sustained. Elijah was supposed to eat for the journey is far. Each time we partake of him, what we do, we eat, remembering what he went through, how he was sustained, how he was able to go through and finish his own. Even when he could not bear it, he prayed, Father, if it's possible to go for normal, it will be done. In other words, when you eat in remembrance of him, when challenges come, you all tell God, Father, I know this is just a test for me. I will overcome it. As a wife, as a father, as a husband, as a sister, as a brother. When challenges come, Christ took the communion, the last one with disciples. By the time he was praying in Gethsemane, he couldn't bear it, but he told God, not my will, but it will be done. In other words, when we eat and drink, what happens? When challenges come, we don't just dodge it. We say, God, not as I will, but your will be done. Lord, I feel like fighting, but I know a servant of God must not strive. Lord, I feel like saying the but no, no, don't speak like that. You are to exalt, you are to encourage others. Do you get what I'm saying? When you eat and drink in remembrance of me, Christ finished his assignment on earth. He went through what none of us would have imagined a Messiah to go through. He went through mockery. People spat on him, they flogged, they messed him up, but he did not change his mind. In other words, when you eat and drink, knowing that, say, God, I want to end well. You are sustained. The fire is sustained. Your confidence in God is sustained. Praise the living. The Bible says Christ is not the hope of glory. When we want to think like him, like a prayer, we always say, I want to think like Jesus. Speak like him. Relate like him. I tell you, you can say it, but when those challenges come, we know whether you have Christ on your inside. Because Christ in you will help you to be quiet, not to react when you want to react. Praise the living Jesus. I want us to spread our hands on this table. We need to tell God, Lord, I need the power that sustains the fire for the miraculous. As I eat of your flesh and drink of your blood, no matter what people are saying around me, Jehovah Lord, I will stay focused. I will not be distracted. For the glory ahead, Lord, I will go through. Lord, your will must be done in my life. You have something you will perfect that which concerns me. Lord, as I eat your flesh, Almighty, as I drink your blood, Lord Almighty King, I become an overcomer in Christ Jesus. Lord Almighty, I will not give up. I will not be corrupted. My fire will not go off. No matter the pressure. Begin to speak to this table. Speak and say, Lord Almighty, I want to partake of your feet and your blood, Lord Almighty. I want the fire to be sustained. The fire to hear you alone. The fire to obey you. The fire to live for the Lord Almighty. The fire will not be distracted. My fire will not go off. No matter the pressure. No matter the conspiracy. No matter the voices. No matter the desire. No matter the influence. No matter the pressure. The fire will not go off. Lord, I want to be like Jesus. 
in my heart, in my thoughts, in my desires. Jehovah King of glory, fill us up to overflow. Lord, as we eat of your flesh, as we drink almighty, we remember that you finished your own assignment on earth. You fulfill purpose and you are still in glory. Lord, as we eat in almighty, may we go through, may we finish well. Jehovah, may we make heaven in the end. May we be overcome and God almighty. Masa Tarabaha, In Jesus' name we are praying. If you are in the congregation, you are not born again. What I've said, what I've shared here, can only work for you if you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Not just to save you, but to be the one giving you instruction on what to do. If you say he's your master, you must obey him. If you are not born again, I want to see your hand above your head, so I will pray. If you are not born again, if you have not confessed him one time or the other, or you are dragging. Maybe when I marry, I'll be born again. When I finish, I'll be born again. When I get to you, born again. Anybody in the house, begin to say, Lord, I thank you for your time in your presence. Begin to pray, Lord, thank you. your word has gone forth. My fire will be sustained. I will not derail. I will not end like Samson. I will finish well, Lord Almighty. No matter the weaknesses I have now, like Peter, I will finish well. Lord Almighty, no matter my weaknesses, that men are seen and they think I will not finish well. I know you are swimming in my weakness. Lord, your world has gone ahead. My fire will not go off. I will not be corrupt. I will not be deceived. To you over by the power in your flesh, Lord Almighty. Renew a right within you, Lord Almighty. Fill me up to overflowing. Make me a worthy instrument in your hand. A vessel unto honor. Prepare for your use. And in Jesus' name I pray. Father, let this be your very blood and this your flesh. Jehovah, as we eat, may the fire in us be sustained. The fire to live for you. The fire to serve you. To be worthy in your hand. Worthy vessel unto honor. Prepared for another mighty. As we eat, may we remember. Jehovah, how you went through and you finished well. In Jesus' name we pray. And may the almighty God bless each and every one of us. May the word we hear tonight not be taken day of judgment. But may the light in this world keep shining on our path. We we'll begin to see better, reason better. Jehovah, act better. Make a life episode that men will read. Tame our tongue and season our word. Give us a hearing ear to hear you alone. When we are being corrected, Father, may we accept correction. Jehovah, instruct us, my Lord and my God, teach us and guide us. In Jesus' precious name. And amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Once again, let's appreciate God for that wonderful section. Let's give God all the glory. Hallelujah. It's time to pay our tithe and to collect our offerings. Remember, if God must be a stakeholder in your business, you need to pay your tithe so that things will not be tight for you. Life is all about giving. When you drink water and you refuse to urinate, it becomes a problem and a challenge. When you eat and you refuse to defecate, it becomes a challenge. So it's like a cycle as you eat. It goes round and round like that. Praise the Lord. Talks about giving. Everybody gives. You give to live. Package something wonderful. We cannot pay for what we've received this evening. Package something awesome. The measure you give that is the measure of which God himself is going to multiply to you. If you are paying your tithe, please, I would like you to walk up to the altar. Come to front of the altar if you are paying your tithe. Those of us packaging wonderful seeds. I want us to lift, this, lift it up this evening. Lift your offering up and lift your tithe up. As you close your eyes, talk to God. Say, Father, I have come to fulfill your word. You said in the book of Luke that we should give and it shall be given unto us. Good measure, press down, shaking together. Running over shall men give unto our bosom. Talk to him, say, Father, as I pay my tithe, things will not be tight for me. You will rebuke the devourer for my sake. In the precious name of Jesus, I want your amen to be loud. Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory for what you've done for us. Thank you because we cannot pay for what we've received tonight. We want to say may your name be exalted. 
tonight accept us, accept, accept our tithes and our offerings in the precious name of Jesus. As many paying their tithe, my Father, from this exalted altar, we decree things will no longer be tight for you. Doors will be opened unto you, doors of blessings, doors of increase in the precious name of Jesus. This will be the least of tithes we'll pay the remaining days of your life in the precious name of Jesus. And as you give your offering, good measure, praise down, shaking together, running over, shall men give unto your bosom in the mighty name of Jesus. I decree from this exalted altar that from today henceforth, men will remember you for good. All I set on you will favor you. The rest of your days shall be the best of your days. You shall not lack in the mighty name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Give rejoicing. Give rejoicing. Hallelujah. the communion steward come forward.
your first day in this assembly. Can I see your hand above your head? Today is your first Tuesday or your first service with us. Anybody? Don't be shy. Okay? We welcome first timers. We give them handshake and give them a pack. Boom. And hand them over to Almighty God. Any first timer? They're on the way. Praise the Lord. Good news. <laughs> on Thursday is open heaven. On Thursday is open what? Meaning that on Thursday we are in a new month. Next tomorrow. Let's laugh for Jesus. You have seen today, you see new month. You end this year with your mouth filled with testimony. Though your beginning may be small, your latter end shall greatly be increased in Jesus' precious name. What you have been pursuing all this while, the brother has not proposed. He's coming. Oh my God. As I'm smiling, the brother is convinced you are the one. In the name of Jesus, he's convinced that's what I know. He's convinced you are the one. And when he comes, if I, even you be thanking God, ah, at last, and at last, the Lord has made it for you. Congratulations. Even your womb will have baby this year. You see that you're pregnant this year. This year. You see that you're pregnant. This year. You know I'm talking like this. God made it easy for me getting married, conceiving, you know, I don't do pregnancy tests. And I was just giving birth, and I tell you, only God can do that. The same God I did it for me will do for you. The same God that brought my husband and myself together will bring your husband or your wife together. The same God that made it easy for me to conceive without going to hospital, without, oh my God, you know to see me that time now, you know that it's God. Eh? The way God will make me look, you know that this, only God can do it. You, you see me, you know that this is pregnancy. Amen. I tell you, the same God will do for all of us here. No woman in this assembly would, would die without having a child. And no sister, no brother will, will stay without having a wife or husband. No matter how hard the enemy tries, you'll be married. When I say happily married, enemy has failed. In Jesus' precious name. So, open heaven is on Thursday in the morning, 6 a.m. The theme is the mystery of the unshakable marriage. I encourage you. The mystery of the unshakable. You know what unshakable? That means the wind will blow, storm will come, the mind will still stand. It doesn't mean that the challenges doesn't come, but they refuse to bow to the challenges. Don't get this thing wrong. Alright? Don't say maybe, ah, they mean they're not. No. The storm will come, but they say, no, we are in need together. And when you are two together, the Bible says they're better than one. Am I right? Simple. So don't think maybe, hey, my own, your own is better. Your own is good. Your precious name. So on, on, on 1st of November, Thursday, in the morning, 6 a.m., come with your friends. Tell that your friend, that your loved one, come, we're having a program in my church, Open Heaven. Prayerfully invite that person. Because they never can tell the world the person here that will change his or her life. Some are thinking their husband is bad. Maybe they are the one that needs to change. Some think it's their wife. Maybe they want to change. Because most time, we think the other person, we are the one that needs to work on ourselves. Praise the living Jesus. Then young people that are still single need to come. Then next month we are ending, we're going to be a very remarkable month in this assembly. Because on the second of the of November, the second Sunday, we are going to have couples in this assembly. Two couple two okay, in second and third service, they'll come and tell us briefly how God has helped them in their marriage. We'll learn. I tell you, they'll tell you how storm came, how they didn't bend them, they got up because they have roots. They know we are married. Amen. So when they bend, they will get up again. Amen. And that's for open heaven. Then the youth, remember, on, Tuesday, on Thursday, 2nd of next month, you are meeting on Friday by 6 p.m. If you are youth, please shout hallelujah. If you are a youth. <laughs> let me tell you who a youth is. A youth is a child of God, male or female, that is about to marry, not yet married. So if you are in that category, you are a youth. Are you hearing me? Don't say uh, my age. Which, who told you your age? 
God is ancient God. God is older than you. So don't say, ah, I can't join them. They are small, small boys. And who told you they are small, small boys and girls? Do you know where your husband is there? Do you know where your husband is there? He just come there and say, I've been waiting for you. Thank God. God will open their eyes. And like, ah, he awoke me. And I didn't know you were the honest man. And, and now we have a shout, oh, Lord, worry me. Abi? When the two meet together, praises will go up. Hallelujah. Today is Esther Babatunde's birthday. Who is Esther Babatunde? Tomorrow, break two hour by 12 noon. Don't forget that. Keep clapping for her. <laughs> Esther Babatunde. She's another Queen Esther. They are the one God has prepared to redeem his people. Ah, she's still praying. She's still waiting upon the Lord. Still for her to watch her sister Esther in the church. Decree the blessings of God upon her. She came in a unique month. The tenth month. The month of favor before great and mighty. The month when Esther proposed to go to the king, even when she was afraid. But she said, I will go. Three days fasting, she was able to assess the king. And the miraculous happened. The wonders happened. God used her to deliver the Jews in the land of Shushan. Pray that God's hand will upon Sister Esther, Baba Tunde, that all the family will need to take the Lord will make available for them. The father, the mother, the wisdom, the resources, the protection, the counsel, the guidance, evil will not befall her. No sickness in the air will have power over her. No generational problem in the family, either the father or mother, will have power over this daughter of Zion. Because she's in God's to the Lord might keep her. Many more years she'll spend on earth in good health, assessing the blessing God had made available for her. Evil has nothing about her. Evil hand will not touch her. When the parents are there or not, she'll be shielded by the power in the name of Jesus, by the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Her days are blessed. 